Shakti. Women in India are called Shakti. Shakti meaning power, empowerment. Shakti is creation, courage, confidence, spirit, strength, sustenance, energy, enthusiasm and empathy, Shakti. If women is Shakti, does she need to be empowered? No, she is Shakti, the power. She creates, nurtures and sustains. She is both a force and a source of inspiration for the entire mankind. Ancient India accorded women highest position. Manusmruti says, Yatra naryastu pujyante ramante tatra devata Meaning, where women are respected, gods make their home. How true it was then and how true it is today. As I address all of you here, she is worshipped by all Indian men and women in three forms of Shakti. Power, wealth and wisdom over nine nights and ten days as part of Navratri celebrations. Famous poet Kalidasa says, Vagartha viva sampruptav, vagartha pratipattaye, jagatav pitarav vande, parvati parameshwarav. Word and meaning are inseparable, similar to the divine couple Parvati, Parameshwara or Ardhanarishwara. If masculine power is word, feminine power is meaning. Masculine power is ability, feminine power is inspiration. Masculine power is concept, feminine power is, any guess? Action. <laughs> if masculine power is wire, feminine power is electricity. So roles were aligned based on the natural biological male energy Purusha and female energy Prakriti similar to Chinese Yin and Yang. India is a land of rich cultural heritage. Earth is worshipped as mother, water is life. And among thousands of rivers in India, amazing fact is, except one, all other rivers bear feminine names. Ganga, Tunga, Kaveri, Yamuna, Narmada, Sindhu and so on. If women was treated so high in India, was this so always? No. It was high during Vedic age and Golden age and declined with the invasion by British and Mughal. The property, life and chastity of women were of a little value to the invaders who treated women as objects of pleasure. So the need to protect women arised. Rigid systems like child marriage, parda or sati were introduced. From such difficult time then to today for women to progress has not been a cakewalk. Social reformation, freedom struggle and education backed by sound legislation has laid a good foundation for women empowerment. Today, Indian women are reclaiming their equal positions as partners with men in all walks of life. Politics, technology, administration, defense, space, corporate, legal, any and every, including business. Modern and Western approach to human life is human right based. In India, it has always been duty based. So women always had voting rights whereas other countries had to struggle for it. Women's suffrage became possible in USA only in 1920, while Switzerland in 1971. By then, India had its first women prime minister, Indira Gandhi. Women leaders were not a novelty in Indian history. They were inspired by people like Jansi Rani Lakshmi Bai, Kitturani Chennamma, Rani Durgavati and others. Behind success of every Indira, Nui, Satya, Nadela or Sundar Pichai or their mother's effort and sacrifice. In India, mothers are respected first, then father and guru. 
Mahatma Gandhi has said, the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. So I believe behind success of every nation, there are powerful women, Shakti. While we hear horrific stories of women violence or rape instances, which are true, but from small part of India. India is not in the top list. And also, India is at the bottom of the list for crime rates committed by women. Today, Indian women are no longer mute spectators. They are speaking up, voicing their concerns, you know, facing challenges and evolving to take up powerful positions. As a result, we have 1.5 million Indian women elected to local bodies. 33% of them are mayors and councillors. And more than 6 million women are actively involved in public administration. Thanks to Indian women, Panchayati Raj or rural self-administration is the world's single largest social revolution. Indian women play a vital role in economy too. National savings constitutes 32% to India's GDP and 80% of it comes from household savings managed by women, including gold and property. Western countries, the household savings is around 5%. Another interesting fact is, in India, every ship is launched by women. And India is the first country to recruit women into army. Our Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, mentioned recently in his address that development is intrinsically linked to women empowerment, and that begins with girl child. Media normally covers stories of women violence or celebrities. Today, I would like to share stories of women who form major part of India. These are ordinary women who have inspired me for their extraordinary achievement. The unsung heroes. The year was 1850. Resources were scarce. But my great-great-grandmother, Gauramma, had no access to education or training. But she fulfilled role as a dutiful daughter, wife, and mother. After all this, at a later phase of her life, she set out on a pilgrimage with her husband across the length and breadth of India, important barefoot. And that took 12 long years. Gaurama has inspired her family members across generations. To me, this is a true example of balancing between family life and personal aspirations. You only live once, and if you do it right, once is enough. <laughs> Normally, lawyers fight for others, right? But this lawyer, Sheila, had to fight for herself. Thanks to politics and leg pulling, she opted out of the local Federation of Women Lawyers, despite her significant contribution. But not one to give up, Sheila started an alternate federation at state level first, then at the national level. And within two years of setting up of All India Federation of Women Lawyers, all other federations across the country, including the one she opted out, got affiliated to it. Soon, she became the second Indian woman as world's president of International Federation of Women Lawyers, popularly known as FIDA. She scripted success path for herself and for the organization, a model for all professionals. Sheila's success mantra, never say die, never say can't do. True grit and determination, thy name is Malati Holla. Born normal, polio struck early in life Today, she's grown up as an amazing human being. Malati chose poets as an alternate best medicine to forget her pains. And today, she's a para-Olympian bringing laurels to the country with 300 plus awards. 
lack of any resources did not stop Malati to achieve her goals. And she jokingly tells everyone who indulges in self-pity, I have undergone only 36 surgeries so far and ready for more if need be. As a banker, she has the uncanny ability to remember 6,000 plus account numbers, customer account numbers. And Malati runs a non-profit organization, Matru Chaya, for differently abled and underprivileged children. And her ever smiling energy is infectious and she continues to inspire thousands of people. Her favorite message, I have disability in my body, none in my heart, none in my mind, and none in my confidence. <laughs> Normally, girls grow up from bobby dolls to boyfriends. But for Manjula, trekking shoes and bicycle are her best friends. A simple girl from a small village has today grown up to be a techie. She's held senior positions in IT industry in India and US, a serial entrepreneur, an advisor to startups across the globe. She's traveled 60 plus countries. She has nine patents. And even more interestingly, she's at ease talking about any subject on this earth. Technology, psychology, history, culture, neuroscience, you name it. So I call her mini walking Google. <laughs> a karate black belt champion Manjula is also an endurance athlete. She says, I learned to walk at two, run at three, cycle at five, but swim at 35 after registering for Ironman event. <laughs> she mastered the art of swimming in few months despite fear of open waters. And while she was swimming in the rough ocean, her legs crammed and became immobile. But that did not stop her to continue to swim for 1.9 kilometers, cycle for 90 kilometers, and run for 21 kilometers, all in just eight and a half hours. She's the third Indian woman to complete the Ironman event. Manjula is Shakti, the new age Indian woman. She believes in mind over matter. Hakuna Matata, meaning no worries. When the world turns its back on you, you turn your back onto the world. This is what exactly she did. This typical Indian girl with minimum education got married and she was blessed with a pretty baby girl too. She was supposed to live happily ever after, isn't it? But destiny had a different plan for her. She was devastated when her marriage failed early in life. And her future looked bleak as she did not have good education, skill, or experience. Financially dependent, emotionally dejected, and broken. To make things worse, her circumstances forced her to a very difficult decision, a decision to give up maternal rights of her only daughter. Emotional harassment, lengthy court case, separation from her daughter. She had every reason to sob, blame, feel helpless, indulge in self-pity, get depressed or addicted. She was bruised, but not beaten. She invoked the Shakti in herself to create a better future. She went back to college, and today she has multiple master degrees, worked in corporate sector, became an entrepreneur, a trainer, a mentor, a coach, a counselor, and a social activist. Thanks to her family and friends who stood by her. Today, instead of contributing only to her family or her child, she's contributing to the society at large, especially the less privileged. An, an alumni of the a prestigious B school, Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. She's empowering all other women to recognize the Shakti in themselves through workshops and symposium. She's traveled widely, addressed hundreds, featured in TV shows and radio programs. And she feels fortunate to have interacted with People's President of India, 
Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. And she has interacted with him more than 10 occasions. Dr. Kalam has inspired her to ignite the youth of our nation. She is privileged to be a speaker at TEDx now. You must inspire yourself before you can inspire others. Aren't these women examples of true Shakti? So I feel the future age of India or even the world will be called as age of Shakti. I believe in three eyes to nurture the Shakti within ourselves for all the women in this world. Identity, invest and invent. We got to create a powerful identity for ourselves by investing in self-development and invent or reinvent the new I. The world is moving towards gentler way of doing things. And women do things gently and intelligently. And the world is ready for a softer power, women power, Shakti. Let us all awaken the Shakti. <laughs>